All right, I came across this really cool effect uh, on YouTube, and the guy that did it did it in Photoshop, so I wanted to see if I could recreate it in Affinity Photo. Uh, I had to change a few things around, but let's see if we can't create this. So let's get started. I'm going to close out of this and go back down here and open up Affinity Photo. And you can see I already have the, uh, the picture here. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with nothing so we can see how to build it from scratch. So let's go ahead and uh, select all our layers here. And we'll just go ahead and delete all of this. And uh, actually, let's really go right from the beginning. So let's create a new document. And our new document is going to be 2,000 pixels by 2,000 pixels by 150 uh, DPI. Let's go ahead and create that. So let's go ahead and close out of this other one here. All right, so that's the screen size that we're going to start with. And so now we have to find an image, and pretty much it could be any image, but when you look at money, a lot of times you see like these old style pictures, or you know, if you look at European money, it's got you know ancient or older style picture. So what I did is I found this picture here of a Roman general. I'm going to deselect for right now. And so really what we want to do is we're just going to get like a headshot of this and see what we can do with it. So let's go ahead and grab our elliptical marquee tool. And let's make a nice big broad selection of him. Like that. And I do have the feather set to about 200 pixels here. So we'll go Command C to copy that, and we'll go over to our blank document and paste that in there. Command V. Now he's not quite big enough there, so we're gonna go ahead and size him up. So let's zoom out just a little bit here. Let's grab him and make it so that he takes up a good portion of the screen. I'm gonna scale him up even a little bit bigger than that and we'll position him right in the middle. Now, I've only done this once so far, so hopefully I won't mess up uh, if I do bear with me. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to convert this color picture to black and white. So let's select that and let's come over to our adjustment layers and we'll click on black and white. And for our purposes, we're just going to leave it stock just the way it is here. So we've got that done. Great. And what we'll do now is we will select both of these layers and merge those. Or rest, merge selected, and then we're going to and rasterize and trim it. So now we need to put our effect on top of this, our texture on top of this. So let's create a blank pixel layer, and we're going to fill this with, we're going to go with a custom color, um, let's come over to the grays, and let's fill this with a 50% gray, and we'll apply that. So we have our, our base color here. Now what we need to do is we need to start building our texture on top of this color. So let's come over to these live filters. And let's scroll down until we get to halftone. And as you see, this default thing is it's huge, it's way too big for what we want. So we want to bring this cell size down quite a bit. Let's go ahead and bring it down to, I think I, I used eight, worked pretty well for it. And then uh, contrast, let's set that at 50%. All right, so we've got that. Uh, and let's drop that right onto the pixel layer. And then we also need to rasterize and trim that because now what we're going to do on that layer is we're going to apply a distortion filter. So let's go to filters and distort. Let's come up to twirl. All right. And uh, let's set the angle to 100 degrees. 
And if we look at the radius, we've got it maxed out here at 1024. And our canvas size is 2000. So if you can see how that circle is not quite getting all the way out to the edges there. But what we're going to do is we can either increase it here or we can just go ahead and apply this and then manually let's just size that up a little bit bring it up to there and that is covering the entire document size so we'll come here and let's change the blending mode on this to hard mix okay so there you can see we've already kind of got the uh, that paper or that money paper texture that we see on bills. Now the next step is to give it the color. So we're going to go ahead and add another pixel layer. And we're going to fill that with, let's change the colors from grayscale to, let's go to the HSL color wheel because we're going to type in a specific code for the green that we want. And the code that we have for this is 0, E, 3, D, 0, 0. Okay. And we'll hit Enter. And we'll go ahead and apply that. All right. Let's change the blend mode on this to, I believe I had it on overlay, screen. Let's go with screen. Screen looks right for that. And then what I did is I found a font on defont.com. So let's go ahead and just put some numbers in the corners just to, for giggles. So we'll come up here and we will up here and let's make this a, let's make it a 10, 10 whatever. We don't know what it's going to be. Um, and let's go ahead and change the font to the font that I chose was waste, waste money. Okay, waste money. And we'll go ahead and change the color on that somewhat to tell you what, let's type in that same code here and see what happens if it blends in or not. So we had zero. E, 3, D, 0, 0, enter. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And then we'll just go ahead and option drag that. Yeah, no, no. Let's option drag that down here. And there you go. There is your money texture halftone effect. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. It was pretty simple. Um, there was quite a bit different than the Photoshop tutorial because they use smart objects. And I don't even know if Affinity, Fo if Affinity Photo does smart objects. So, but this was my workaround. Anyway, peace. Talk to you later. Bye. If you liked it, please click the like button and or subscribe.